just under an hour ago. And the wave going on. As I was saying before, we announced the lineup for the semi final. It's an immensely popular sport, and I think that this will give it the final launch. I think it, will, it won't become a major sport, but I think it'll become a pretty popular television sport right the way around the world. It has great television appeal, I think, much more than long track. That's right, it's very exciting. And uh, I think uh, these guys here, we've got a good, good quality s standard of racing. And uh, it's going to be very, very exciting this evening. The spectators here have been fantastic. Get ready. Tremendous atmosphere in this Hal de Glass. The place absolutely packed to the gunnels. And really, it's like being at a football match. There's confirmation of Group 1 in this semi-finals. Wilf O'Reilly from Great Britain, Lee from Korea, Dano from Canada, and Macmillan from New Zealand. And where would you get a seat there? Number 45. If anything, it's been more popular than the figure skating, which has been going on around this throughout the last 10 days, around this Alder Glass. It's been fantastically well supported. And a real tingle Number 51. in our stomach here as we await Wilf O'Reilly making his final preparations. Wilf, the ultimate perfectionist, and has been careful not to put too much pressure on himself. A little bit upset with what happened in Calgary, where despite the fact that it was an exhibition sport, he did so well and got so little acclaim for it. All the focus was really at the same time on Eddie the Eagle Edwards and the ski jumping, and uh, Will felt that it was a little unfair that someone who's best at his sport in the world was a little overtaken by someone who, at the, that level, was the worst. And there you can see a man who's got even more experience than O'Reilly, Michel Dagneau, just making his final preparations. He and O'Reilly, here comes Wilf, great friends. You'll probably see them chat to each other just before the race. They've been competing on the world circuit for the last six years together. They've been one and two in world championships before. But when they get out there, they know it's absolutely sudden death. Well, these people <laughs> certainly come to enjoy themselves. The atmosphere is truly electric. And uh, I don't know what it's going to be like for the finals if they're getting this heated for the semis. Brilliant atmosphere. And the skaters, I think, uh, feeling the tension, just taking their time there. Very important to keep your composure, stay calm before the start of the race. And there they are, just sat down, ready to draw for their positions, their starting positions. And uh, they'll be glad to get out on the ice, I'm sure. Very, very nervous moments for those guys. The Korean coach just having a word with Jun Ho Lee, joint bronze medalist in Sydney in the World Championships, behind O'Reilly, who won the world title. Bad news, I'm afraid, if you weren't listening earlier on. Matt Jasper, silver medalist in the 1000 in the World Championships in Sydney didn't make it through to the semis. Danyo and Lee went through from that first quarter final. But O'Reilly will be brilliantly prepared. Archie Marshall on the right there, the British team manager who's followed Wilf and guided him through these years. I should think will be much more tense than Wilf, who puts very little pressure on himself. That's right, quite often it's uh, more nervous for the people on the sidelines, the competitors. They'll get their nerves out of the system before they get on the ice. And probably this is the worst time. They'll be desperate to get out there and get this race underway. Here, some of the competitors for the second. There's Frederick Blackburn, second semi-final, but the first. Competitors are going out now. Number 45. So this, the moment of truth. And Wilf knows that Luck can play a big part in this in Albeville. Just one false moment in the pre-Olympic tournament and he was out, didn't make the final. And he knows that through no fault of his own, he could come a cropper here. A master technician, tactician, but he has made mistakes previously in major competitions, but seems to have eliminated them in the last couple of years. Convincing winner in the World Championships. There's Danio. You can see there are two referees on the ice, and it's their job to control the race, make sure that there's no pushing, 
that the skaters are fair to each other and they don't two of them don't block the third skater causing them not to make it through to the finals so a big job for the officials here but what a moment Mark McMillan has shown wonderful change of pace, the 27-year-old from New Zealand. A lot of experience here. O'Reilly, 27. And uh, Michel Daniel, 25, but been around for such a long time at the top level. So it'll be Daniel on the inside, then McMillan, Goal. then Lee, O'Reilly on the outside. O'Reilly, who usually likes to start quick and dominate from the front, and then relax into the race. Riley. Here we go then, with his first semi-final in the Olympics. And O'Reilly quickly away, and takes the lead. O'Reilly first then, McMillan second, Lee third. And Daniel right at the back. And that was a good start from Wilf. Excellent, he forced Daniel right over onto the inside, and Daniel lucky to get round those markers. But he moves up into second place now. Things are really hotting up. Six laps to go, and O'Reilly, Daniel second, McMillan third, Lee at the back. And still Wilf wanting to dominate from the front. Now he lets Daniel go through. Didn't fight him off. But he won't want to lose any more space at the moment. A little slide there, and he's lucky to retain it. He very nearly went then, Wilf. It's Daniel first, O'Reilly who's made already one mistake, he can't afford any more. McMillan tries to take him on the outside and he's gone, O'Reilly's gone and he's out of it. O'Reilly out and he will not get a medal here in Albeville. It never looked as if he was really comfortable. Made a mistake early on and I'm afraid his hopes are dashed. So it's Daniel first in second place. It's Lee, two qualifier remember for the final, McMillan third. Lee takes it over, Daniel second, McMillan third, and Daniel, can he hold McMillan off? Lee almost certainly through. Lee first, and McMillan takes Daniel, so Daniel and O'Reilly beaten. Lee goes through, McMillan goes through in second place. And the two old protagonists from bygone years, Wilf O'Reilly and Michel Daniel, both of them world and former world champions, bite the dust and don't make it through to the final. So Yun Ho Lee takes his place and I'm afraid there's going to be no British medal in the men's singles. Okay, well here we can see McMillan on the outside trying to work his way around and Kim came through on the inside and poor old Wolf O'Reilly just couldn't cope with it. He's got nowhere to go, lost his balance and wound up on the boards. What a disappointment for him. An absolute disaster. He's made so few mistakes. He's been occasionally unlucky, but tactically has been the master in recent years. But I'm afraid it wasn't a tactical fault that went there. He was reading the race right, but he just didn't seem to have his balance. He nearly went earlier on, and there didn't seem to be any touch of blades there. He just went. That's right, he got his weight wrong. I think he was shocked by the fact that McMillan was coming on the outside, and uh, Lee from Korea was coming up on the inside, and he got two guys there, nowhere to go, because Daniel was right in front of him. So uh, he was in all kinds of trouble, short of going over the top of Daniel, he was in trouble. So now then to the second semi-final. And this a very tight competition as well. Ki Hoon Kim goes for Korea. Frederick Blackburn, number 11 for Canada. Mark Lackey goes for Canada as well. Two of them here in this second semi-final. And Geert Blanchard, number six for Belgium. Blackburn, 19 years old from Chikatumi, number 11 there. There's Geert Blanchard for Belgium. World bronze medalist, Mark Lackey. Eighth in the world's in Sydney, 24 years old. So the experienced skaters have got through here. 
but the two most experienced haven't made it through to the final. There's the favorite there, Ki Sun Kim. Ready. He goes on the inside. So it's Kim, content to bide his time. And it's Blanchard who leads at the moment. In second place, it's Blackburn. Kim third. And at the back, Big Mark Lackey. So the Canadians now deciding to take it up on their own. I wonder if there'll be a tactic and they'll work together. They probably will try and provide a wall, but it's been broken here by Kim, who goes on the outside. Kim then takes the lead. Blackburn second. In third place, Lackey and Blanchard at the back. I'm sure the two Canadians will do their best to help each other, but they've really got their work cut out to sort out the little Korean, Kim. He's decided to go in front, which I think is a good idea, and try and control the race. Blanchard now struggling at the back. So Kim in the lead, the world silver medalist, beaten by O'Reilly, who's now out. So he is the favorite now to take the gold and looks very good indeed. Blackburn tucking in in second place, Lackey third, Blanchard fourth. And this could well be the final result. This is the form at the moment. Kim in the lead as they come round with one and a half laps to go. Blackburn second, Lackey has got to do something now. Blanchard looks a little bit off the pace at the moment. Take the bell, it's Kim first. Blackburn second, Lackey desperately trying to overtake. But has he got the leg? Blanchard's out of it. Off the final bend, Kim makes it, Blackburn second, and Mark Lackey misses out, as does Gert Blanchard. And look at the joy on the face of Frederick Blackburn. Well, Mark Lackey there on the last two laps looked as though his legs had gone. The same as uh, Daniel in uh, heat number one. He really didn't have any acceleration at all to catch up with his teammate. There you could just see him congratulating. But look at this. What a skate from Blackburn. He really read the race well, tucked in behind Kim. And Kim really going to be a force to be reckoned with in the finals. There's no doubt about that. So that's the moment that Mark Lackey will despair of. And there he is, been such a strong skater over the last five years, but he hasn't made it, I'm afraid. The 24-year-old has just missed out. And the four who will go through to the final later on this evening, which you'll be able to see here on Eurosport. Jun Ho Lee for Korea. Frederick Blackburn from Canada. Ki Hung Kim from Korea. And Mark McMillan for New Zealand. There's the results from Group 2. Kim and Blackburn go through from the second semi final. Desperately disappointing. There's confirmation. Two Koreans in the final. Macmillan for New Zealand, Blackburn for Canada, and no Brits. What a disappointment for Wilf O'Reilly. He really did get himself in all kinds of trouble. And there, before the start of the semi-finals, we were talking about a bit of bad luck. And really, I think uh, he was a victim of that. He had two guys either side of him, one guy in front of him, and really nowhere to go. And he was running out of time. The race was progressing, and uh, he really did get himself in all kinds of trouble, lost his balance, and that was the end of his Olympic Games. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Wilf decides to do now. He's spent the best part of a decade right at the top level, won the Olympic medal when it wasn't an official medal sport, no gold, silver, and bronze then, but misses out here when they become pure medals. I wonder if he'll stick around for Lillehammer in two years' time. It'll be a difficult decision for him. Right then, now we're going to take the women's semi-finals in the relay. And in the first semi-final, we have Canada, Italy, the Netherlands, and the USA. 
in the second semi-final for the unified team, formerly of the Soviet Union, France, China, and Japan. No heat to quarter-finals here in the relay. A semi-final and a final later tonight. The medals will be decided. And again, you'll be able to see those decided here on Eurosport. Now, 3,000 metres, 27 laps of the track. And Chris will explain to you the uh, uncomplicated manoeuvres here. It's pretty simple. Well, it is very complicated, and it will look very, very complicated on your screens. The skaters will be racing around the outside of the track, and they can change over. They can tag on to the next uh, member of the team at any time, except for the last two laps. So you'll see skaters trying to build up speed on the inside of the track, and then they'll hand over to their next teammate. Very, very complicated. There'll be skaters flying about all over the place, but we'll do our best to keep you in touch with the uh, positions all the way through the race. And it will be tough. But as Chris says, we'll do what we can. I can tell you that the two favorites will be Canada and the Netherlands. Italy and the United States have not the same tradition, really, as these two countries. France going in the second semi-final. If we concentrate on the first, for Canada, they can nominate four or five, but they have listed six, because what happens is they can, if any of the skaters gets injured, they can put in someone from outside that squad, or four or five. And they have a very powerful squad. Sylvie Daigle is there, the world record holder. Natalie Lambert is there, world champion. Anna Perro, Christine Baudrias, Angela Cotroni, even Donatelli. Very strong lineup indeed. For the Netherlands, they have the two Velzebor sisters. Monique, who is the girlfriend of Wilf O'Reilly. I don't know what she'll be thinking at the moment, but she's going to have to block out any thoughts. And Simone, her sister. Alongside them will be Joel van Kotzveld van Ankeri, Priscilla Ernst, and Penelope Dilella. The Golds of Boar sisters wearing 45 and 46 on their helmets. For the United States of America, the lineup Darcy Donald, Carrie Johnson, Amy Peterson, Trisha Sennis, Kathy Terra Turner, and Nikki Zelwemeyer. And for Italy, Marinella Canclini, who had a remarkable quarterfinal yesterday. She'll be wearing 29, went round in 47 dead, which at the moment is the fastest time ever. The Sylvie Daigle time is still to be ratified. Also there, Candido, Colchiri, Latori, Montidoro, and Cristina Sciola. So here we go then with the first semi-final. And away they go, and into the lead. The Chinese go into the lead. In fact, they reverse the semi-finals around. And China in the lead, France in second place. They had a sudden reversal of the two semi-finals, and China it is who go into the lead, France in second place. You can see how exciting it is as the skaters pass over to their teammates. Very important to get a good, clean push. As you change over, they can do as many laps as they like. But they'll have a strategy worked out. And China going off to a blistering pace. Now, you watch here as they change over. That's Shulan Wang taking over from Li Wan in front. And they've opened up a terrific gap. United, the uh, French team still trying to stay in touch. It'll be two who qualify. But you can see that China have opened up an enormous gap at the moment. Well, the unified team look quite solid in second place at the moment, but France really desperately trying to get back into the race. So China first, unified team second, France third, Japan at the back. And Japan beginning to make their move now. And Japan move into third place. But still, no one making any inroads on the Chinese. Yanmei Zhang 
leads at the moment by some 30 meters from the unified team in second place number 12 taking over there is Yan Lee and no reduction of the lead in fact if anything it's increased getting down to the halfway stage now remember 27 laps this was and Japan beginning to move through now and beginning to threaten the unified team in second place number 13 taking over there is Julan Wang well China really setting the pace here they've done a good job keeping themselves out of trouble set themselves up a good lead early on in the race and just trying to control it but the unified team are pulling back Japan trying to get up with the unified team France desperately trying to find some speed from somewhere and get back into the race but look how the Japanese are getting up on the unified team 10 laps to go and Chang Yang Li looking to take over and handing over to Yan Man Zhang Zhang it is who has maintained the lead and they look very solid very smooth at the moment extending the lead again but a battle developing for that second place now as Japan beginning to creep up on the unified team France look out of it the battle really for second place there's the unified team number 17 there Natalia Isakova and right behind her the Japanese girl who's gaining all the time and it's not looking good at the moment for the unified team six laps to go can the Japanese catch them and make the final well this is going to be a race of stamina China obviously plenty of room there but a tremendous battle going on between the unified team and Japan Shulan Wang it is who takes it up at the moment we're coming through to the last four laps and in a moment the hooter will sound and they won't be able to make any more changes and look Japan have taken second place Hiromo Takeuchi that is who takes it up they made consistent ground throughout the race after that appalling start she hands over to Mia Naito and that's it that's the final change over these last three laps that's the last one and taking over for Japan Nobuko Yamada who's their top skater well, you can see there the Japanese teammates saying just calm it down there's no problem Yan Mei Zhang it is who leads and the J Japanese team who've gained ground all the way through look at that what a disaster and she's missed out that's unbelievable and the unified team have got through into second place so what an amazing occurrence there for the Chinese team who led right from the gun and they miss out in the end well that really does show how this game is just sudden death I don't think the unified team can believe their luck China read the race completely right fantastic performance and what a disappointment for China the team from Japan and the unified team so a wonderful performance from Japan and the unified team but I'm afraid there'll be some post-mortems going on for the Chinese and the poor girl who went down there Yan Mei Zhang and what will she have to say to her teammates tonight and that really is a cruel cruel blow well the corners as we were saying before get very very cut up during this race and if your blade gets caught down one of the ruts you can just find yourself toppling over and there's nothing you can do about it you can see she went down very very slowly and all hopes of a medal just disappearing in that split second well the Japanese team the Chinese team just looking on and I don't think they could believe what they were seeing
Ladies and gentlemen, the finals for the 1,000 meters men. So Japan and the unified team go through. We'll start France and China desperately unlucky miss out. We'll be back with the second semi-final, Canada, Italy, the Netherlands, and the United States right after this break. The four skaters from one to four. So there is the uh, caption which shows you what happened in the other semi-final. And the uh, four qualifiers. Going to show you the second semi-final in just a moment. But that's the si scene at the moment as we look down onto the ice here at the Alde Glass. And uh, during the break, we saw some awful shots of the Chinese team who are in such a terrible state. And there, one of the French girls who also uh, missed out on that second semi-final. We're gonna show you the first, which uh, we have on tape in just a moment or two, but that really was a awful scenes that we saw during the break with the Chinese girls who are absolutely inconsolable. Well, China did everything right, really, in that uh, relay. They went out early, built up a great lead, got themselves in no trouble at all, and just in the last three or four laps, started to calm everything down. And uh, the Japanese started to close up on them, but uh, really didn't pose any threat at all. And then on the last bend, disaster struck. The, the final skater just got a blade caught. And uh, over she went, and they were unable to uh, qualify for the final. So uh, Japan went through, they did a good race, and the unified team, I don't think, can believe their luck. They'll be rejoicing around the back there. All the way through the race, they look like being third, but uh, by the error of the Chinese, up into second, and they get through into the final with Japan. Well, now we're going to show you the first semi-final we have recorded on tape. So here's the lineup then. Canada, Italy, Netherlands. Netherlands on the outside and the United States. And Canada and the Netherlands, really the favorites here. And straight away for Canada. In first place, there's Anna Pello. In second place, it's the Netherlands. And those two going out as we thought they would. Well, we had two fallers there, USA and Italy, both going down. But they got up very, very quickly and got straight back into the race. There they are. And they have quite a lot of ground still to make up. 27 laps. Both semi-finals, the top two qualifying for the final later tonight and a chance to go for the medals. That's Ziggy Ziegelmeyer for the United States and they have a lot to do if they're gonna catch up now. They're the top two, Canada first. And away goes Annie Perro in first place. Netherlands in second. USA struggling to get on turns, but beginning to make some inroads and Italy last. Well, the USA really starting to dig deep and get back, and you can see them already into the picture. Very important, the changeovers. It's important to get a smooth push, and the race can be won or lost there. There's Canada going around the top bend, no problems. The Dutch changeover. But the USA back in contention. Look at that. What a recovery from the United States. So in front then, Canada first. Netherlands second, USA battling to get up there, but still some 15 meters behind. There's Sylvie Daigle, the world record holder, handing over to Annie Perrow. And for the Netherlands, it's Monique Velzebar handing over to Sister Simone. Plenty of changeovers at the moment. The United States in third spot. And very nearly a nasty accident there. Angela Catroni takes over for Canada. In second spot, it's Simone Velzebour for the Netherlands. USA still trying to get back on terms, not making any more inroads. 
for the United States. They got close a couple of laps ago, and the Dutch girl goes. And that's a disaster, Simone Velzebourg going. And the United States picking it up now in second place, but it looks very easy indeed for Canada, and they don't have to do anything too dramatic now. Except stay on their feet. We've already seen what can happen even when you've got yourself a comfortable lead. You must keep your concentration and keep your eye on the rest of the competition. So much happening out there all over the ice. Annie Perro takes it up, and you can see they're beginning to slow it down as we go in with nine laps to go. USA in second place, and the rest are nowhere. So Canada first. And there's Natalie Lambert. Lambert first in second place to USA. And I'm afraid it's a bit of a disaster for the Netherlands, trying all they can to get back in contention, and they would have had very high hopes, but I'm afraid just one mistake, as we've seen so often, can prove absolutely crucial. Well, the United States, very impressive. They've really capitalized on that mistake, and they're just tucking in now behind the Canadians, and these two look comfortable favorites.